What's up everybody? Welcome back to the RT Clinic. Today I am going to try to prove, disprove something I've been hearing from patients for years. The longer the oxygen tubing is, the higher you got to turn your oxygen flow up because it won't get to the end. I'm tired of hearing it. I'm going to prove it with a little device that I have. Let's go. As a medical professional, it's really, really important that everything we tell our patients is absolutely true because they're really believing it because we're professional and we should be only giving them truth. But that's why today I'm going to test this thing that I've heard for years and years and years. You have your patient on oxygen at home. They have a home concentrator. We know a concentrator brings in room air, pulls out the oxygen. You know, maybe it doesn't deliver the highest percentage of oxygen as in the hospital, but Flow is something that would be constant in those cases. Well, I've heard many times from patients that, you know, I can only put 25 feet on my oxygen tubing or 50 feet. Uh, and after that, I have to start increasing the amount of oxygen or the amount of flow, sorry, amount of flow to get to me and to reach me. Well, that makes no sense, right? I mean, this is a tube. This this tube is not flexing. You've seen the oxygen tubing. It doesn't flex. There's not enough pressure in there to cause it to flex. So why would the amount of flow you give on one side differ from the flow on the other side, no matter how long it is? So I have a really cool device today. It's actually going to measure flow. And you can see my flow meter on the wall is set at 4 liters per minute. As you can see here, the ball is riding right in the center of the 4. Follow the tubing down to the device here, and we have 4.68. So if we go up on it a little bit here, let's go up on our flow, let's take it up to 5. Right there is about the middle of the ball. Go back over, 5.61. So it's running just a, a shade higher than what is actually set on the flow meter, but that's going to be okay for our experiment here. You know, these compensated Thorpe tubes, they make all kinds of different sounds because of how they're hooked into the wall, so it could be, that could affect it. So we're going to keep it stable the whole time so that we can keep this. And let's go to a more normal oxygen flow in a house. So let's go at three liters here. See the three liters on there? going down here and reading 3.60 okay we'll remember that we'll extend this tubing out now our oxygen tubing is running across the room all the way over here to the table and we are currently reading 3.60 the exact same reading. Now those are seven foot oxygen extension pieces and there's four of them. So 28 feet sealed up well. We seem to be running pretty well. Might have had a little leak there, but you can see that. 3.61. Let's add a few more. So we're at 10 now. So 10 times seven, pretty easy, 70 feet. We're gonna plug this in. Three point six zero. That sounds familiar, right? Add a few more. Now we're at twelve, which is eighty four feet. Plug it in, and we're currently still reading three point six zero. So we're eighty four feet of tubing on here, and we are still at 3.60 which means we have not lost even really even a tenth of a liter even a tenth of a liter now one thing that i did find to be very interesting about this experiment is we're using connective tubing here as you can see this and these seal really really well together my initial experiment 
I tried to use some long nasal cannulas, long nasal cannulas, some really long ones, and I tried to cut the tubing, and this is what happens when you cut the tubing. You look really close at this tubing, and you're gonna notice that it's not perfectly round in the center. That's called star tubing, and that's crush proof. So what that does is if it's smashed down, there's ridges inside of this that are actually gonna keep it from fully crushing. So crush proof is really, really hard to get sealed into an oxygen connector. And so had a lot of leaks around it. That part of the experiment did not work. So we had to go to straight extension tubing, which is much more likely something that you'll be using at home. A long piece of extension tubing. The real key is that when you get the extension tubing, you want to have these ends on it like this. So with these ends on it and them going together, that's going to be really, really, really important. So uh, uh, really important to get it, keeping a good seal and keeping our flow. Another thing I want to try is to try this with liquid oxygen because we know we have some liquid oxygen here. So liquid oxygen, of course, there's a video on that. I'll link it up here-ish somewhere. And there's a video on that where I actually freeze a hot dog. So hopefully I can throw that video on there. So this would be uh, liquid oxygen. As it warms, evaporates, it's going to come out. You can hear the flow on it. Much more likely somebody would have at home. They'd probably have a large... We, we, we would call it a cow is what we call it in the business, but it's a large device that actually is going to hold liquid oxygen and then as it warms, it evaporates, it's released, it's 100% oxygen coming out. I'm going to go over here, attach the liquid oxygen and see if we get the same flow of liquid oxygen as we do with the wall oxygen that's coming out. So measuring liquid oxygen is really generic, you know, we go by weight how much is in there by the weight and there's a spring in here and it actually moves this dial to show you how much it has. So you hold it by this end, you see how much it has. But what we're going to do with this, so we're going to adjust the flow meter here and I'm going to put it on four liters. So we have four liters right now coming out the top. We're going to set that there, keep it real stable. Then I'm going to take one seven footer attach it to our super handy flow device and you can see it's running currently 4.8 to 5.2 so somewhere in four and a half range really good to know it's good to know that range because I'm now I'm gonna hook up all the tubing and see how liquid oxygen or evaporated liquid oxygen is gonna run through 84 feet of tubing there's our liquid oxygen Running through 84 feet of tubing, it was 4.48 to 5, 4.52. It's dropped just a little bit, maybe a, maybe a tenth, maybe a tenth of a liter. Let's go back and just verify, because I just I really think this is very this is variable. So I'm going to go straight back and make sure we're still reading. Yes, we are. We're still reading. We're still reading that 4.9 to 4.5 back at the device. So this is a, definitely we lose a tenth, a tenth of a liter at 84 feet. We could calculate that out. Now this could be from leaking. This could be from the, the flow coming through here. But a tenth of a liter wouldn't really be enough to then increase the flow on the back side. Now, one thing that could cause problems with the flow. So one thing that would cause a problem with the flow would be something like this. So if we go and we kink it off, even the crush proof tubing is kind of hard to do. So I've got to really squeeze it. And now I've decreased the flow to about four. Open it back up. You get that initial. And now we're running again 4.4 or so. Crush proof tubing is really, really nice because you can see even if I squeeze it really hard, it's really hard to crush it. Just to demonstrate crush proof tubing also, a pair of needle nose, needle nose pliers. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Squeezing pretty tight. And it starts to drop the flow, but not much. And that's really, really tight. You can see there's not much going through there. And then I let off. 
initial bounce and then it goes back to normal. So really hard to kink this crush proof tubing, which is nice. I kind of kind of thought that might be one of the reasons why people were asked to turn the flow up because you could have leaks, uh, leaks at the connections, which is definitely could happen. So definitely could have a leak at the connection. You could be more likely, well, for one, the longer you have it, the more likely you are to trip. Um, but anytime you have a connection, you could have a leak there. You could also get it kinked. But then one of the last reasons I really think that it's not recommended that you have so much at home is that it costs a lot. <laughs> so that means your oxygen supplier has to supply you with the extension tubing. Make sure you talk to your healthcare provider about getting extension. Now there are some risks to it, but it's really, really important that you have enough extension to get around your house. Mobility is extremely important for somebody who is on oxygen, newly on oxygen, uh, or has been on oxygen for a while because mobility allows us to recruit alveoli, to take deeper breaths, and when you're limited by the amount of oxygen tubing you have, or by the amount of oxygen tubing somebody's, your company is giving you, or whatever it is, it can really limit your lung function. So you want to be able to move as much as you can. So the experiment today, I kind of feel it disproves that whole thing that says, you know, you have to turn your oxygen flow up if you're going to have a really long piece of tubing. We lost a tenth of a liter at 84 feet. I don't think that's even significant enough that you'd feel or have oxygenation issues with it at that point. So, uh, like I said, it's very important to make sure you have plenty of oxygen tubing to get around, but then also make sure you're not tripping over it because that could be, uh, when it's a tripping hazard, that's a definite problem also. So, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this translates to you or translates to your patients in some way but give them plenty of oxygen to get home you know the more connections we have also you know those could come unconnected so make sure somebody's really helping secure those when you have those in your home heck you could even you could even do it like this and then put tape over them just to make sure that it doesn't come undone so that would be just fine for oxygen but kind of disproves what they tell you about adding those extra add extra flow because I think adding extra flow, for most people, they think, well, my oxygen's not going to last as long. And they want it to last as long as it can. So I've proven it. One-tenth a drop with 84 feet. Not enough to even give any kind of medical uh, advice for. So keep, keep your oxygen tubing long. Make sure you don't trip on it. And keep walking around your home. Keep moving because that's the way you're going to keep recruiting this alveoli, oxygenating, and keeping your lungs healthy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.